what is it today is Flag Day, and yeah, I have an what, article you, about what, it. What is the history of that, anyway? I mean, I, honestly, I don't know the history yeah. of it, but it was meant to honor the. I don't know when it was introduced, but it was meant to honor the flag and how, how uh, the first flag. I think, I think the date actually comes from when the when the Second Continental Congress or whatever the whatever the government was in in, in seventeen seventy seven. I think it was uh, adopted. You know the stars and stripes, and at that time, I think it was thirteen stars in a circle, like the Betsy Ross style flag that we were using for the thirteen colonies. And then when that flag was adopted as our country's official flag, um, and I got wind of through his son had his grandson had emailed me and said there's a fellow out in Bayshore, Long Island, uh, who is ninety four years old, and he's a former he's a retired Marine from World War Two. He flew in a, a B twenty four B twenty five bomber in the South Pacific. And he, in the last few years, he's taken up, he's a widower, and um, he's obviously retired many years from his job, and he, uh, he makes these, sign, uh, makes these um, flags out of wooden fence slats and paints them red, white, and blue. It makes, it makes kind of a rustic-looking flag in that kind of Betsy Ross style, uh, style and gives them to his friends and neighbors. And everyone on his block, uh, must be 30 houses, has this flag up. And, and not only that, he's made hundreds of these things. He makes them now in his kitchen, on his kitchen table. Saws the wood, buys paint from the lo- local Lowe's uh, super, st- you know, super, you know, uh, department store, and makes these really cool looking flags. And he gives them gives them away. And then he started g- selling them for twenty bucks each to stores because he had no one else to give them to. He he ran out of takers, you know. He would give them free to people. And uh, the store, these you know, little gift shop owners locally would start selling them. His son worked in East Hampton, and the woman said, "I'll take ten of them." And he said, "How much are you gonna you know sell them for?" So it's almost fifty dollars, and he he got a big kick out of it because you know he just makes these things on his kitchen table, makes one a day if he's bored, you know. So the fact that these things could sell for a nice little price tag in a, in a gift shop, it, it made him chuckle. So he's on the line with us now. He's Jerry Goldman uh, from Bayshore, Long Island. How are you, Jerry? Hi. How are you? Good. I was just telling listeners about you making these flags, and uh, that in recent years that you you know I guess you you've always been a bit of a woodworker. And uh, to fill the time a little bit, you started making these flags. But but why don't you, in your own words, why don't you take it? I mean, what really started this in you? I mean, you know, you started about what, like seven or eight years ago, doing this, right? I actually, what uh, I really can't pin it down. But uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a flag that showed the uh, thirteen stars, and then you know, I had people say to them, "Do you know how many? Well, do you can you name the original thirteen states?" Which I never did. You know, so uh, I had one on the front of my house. I just put it up. And a couple of months later, the lady was coming by doing something. I don't remember what she was doing, telling, asking something about a block party or something. And she said to me, gee, I like that flag you have there. I said, oh, yeah? I said, I think I have another one inside. So I went in and gave it to her. So then I thought, you know, you know, uh, I started giving them out to all my neighbors, and I didn't know half of these people. I just, I see the guy in the driveway and say, would you like one of these flags for your house? I said, the only thing I like is, I said, don't hide it somewhere. Put it up somewhere on a tree or on a garage. And I ended up giving away about 31 or 32 out of 44. Some of the houses uh, I haven't gotten to because they're, uh, they're new people I don't know. And, uh, and a couple of guys actually said to me, no, I don't want it. So I said, well, okay, you don't want it, that's the end of that. <clears throat> and, of course, I never charged anybody for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, then finally I decided to, uh, I said, gee, maybe I could sell these just for something to do. And I went around to three or four stores and said to them, would you like to tell Actually, what had happened was, <clears throat> I didn't do that at all. What happened was my son, Arthur, hold on a second, I'm trying to clear my throat. Yeah. <clears throat> my son is a teacher in East Hampton, and he had... He had a flag that he had out front, and he knew a guy that was making flags on the out of Driftwood, and he told him about him, and the guy said, well, tell him to bring him down to the place I bring him in East Hampton. So he brought one down, and the woman said she liked him very much. She said, could I get ten of them? And about that time, my, my sons were going to treat me to a trip to Ireland to see where my mother and father's family were born. Anyway, so I, I made ten flags, brought them out there, and uh, I didn't know what the price was because my son Arthur told him he wanted $22. So she had a price on him of $48. So I said to him, she's out of her mind. So I left the flags there, and then we went to Ireland. And about a month after I came back from Ireland, I went out there, and uh, she had sold all of them. Yeah. 
So wait, why, and that's Jerry, what started why did, it. Why did you think that was funny though? Forty eight dollars. You don't think the flags are worth that? <laughs> well, I didn't think nobody spent forty eight dollars for a flag, you know. But he stamped it. You know, there's a lot of money. <clears throat> and then eventually, what happened was the same woman that was selling them for me. She said to me, "Were you in the service?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Well, I'd like you to put a little something on the flag that tells you about your service." You know, so I did. I, you know. And uh, I said I was in the South Pacific. I was a radio man and a gunner and a B-25. But uh, I said I didn't kill any uh, Japanese people, you know. Said So uh, I said I'm not going to lie and tell you the story. So that was it. Right. So she made up a card with that, and uh, that we started putting that on there. And uh, she kept selling them. And uh, one time she sold six of them to one woman in one day. Really? She bought six of them for gifts. Yeah. So you know. So what, how long does it take uh, you to make one of these things? Like how much labor? Actually, is it? actual actual working time that I'm working on them is about an hour. Because let's face it, after I cut the five pieces of wood, which takes me about six minutes, then I spend about five or six minutes sanding them down. Then I give them a coat of paint, you know, with red, white, and blue, whatever it is, and I go inside and read the paper, wait for it to dry. Yeah. And that's so you see how long that. And then when it dries, I go out and give another coat, which takes me like a minute and a half. So I figure the most time it ever takes me all together is about an hour. Yeah. That's about all well, it Jerry, takes. You're not know? supposed to admit that. You're supposed to say it takes all day. Well, you know? I know, but what? Well, <laughs> if you remember, you put in the article, I said, if it took me four or five hours, I wouldn't be giving them away. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you know, uh, I see people, uh, you know, like right now I got a guy, my daughter told me, works with a, and he wants one. She told me he was a Marine. I said, Tell them there's no charge. I'm not going to charge a Marine. You know, one of my buddies, I'm going to give it to him. For what? What do I care? You know, it's, it takes an hour's work. That's it. Right. Now, so. and so that you would, when you talked about that first, you know, this person's suggestion that, oh, you're in the service. Well, why don't you put that on the flag itself? So you put a little tag on with a little string, and it, you mentioned that, you you know, the basics of you were a machine gunner, a radio man on the, on the bomber. But then on the back, don't. You, when did you start putting on? You have a, you have a wartime picture of yourself standing That's in front of the. That's my bomb. son Jerry and his brother decided that they went to some printer. <clears throat> they took the picture that I have of my whole crew, and they blocked everybody out except me, <laughs> and they made up these stickers, and they gave them to me. They said, "Put this on the back, Dad." What? I said, "What the hell did you do that for?" They spent about three hundred dollars making all these things up. Really. <clears throat> So, I mean, so that's on there now. That's all, you know. So. I mean, I guess it gives a little background about who made the flag. That's significant, you know? Yeah. I mean, these things weren't uh, mass-produced <laughs> in some factory. They were made, you know, by the hands of, uh, of no, World they War II No, they're not mass-produced. Yeah, There's not right. that many World War II yeah. vets left, you know? I know. I had a laugh, uh, Corey. My, my son said to me, Dad, you ought to go on Shark Tank. I said, yeah, I'll go on Shark Tank. And the guy will say, how much did you make last year? Uh, $700. <laughs> yeah, but think, think of the potential, Jerry. Think of the potential. Oh, no, God. On. First of all, I'd have to hire 500 people to, when you go on Shark Tank, the, the way those people, you know, the stuff that they run into. You, you, gotta, know, you so. gotta, okay, you can, now we got to practice your pitch, Jerry. What will it be like? Uh, <laughs> I mean, right? Is it? And they call it an elevator speech because it's the. It's got to be short enough to, uh, you know, give to someone in an elevator ride. So, uh, you know, you got to leave. You know, these are these are handmade items. It's patriotic, right? Yeah. So. One of my sons said to me, "Dad, you should raise the price." I said, "I'm not going to tell people that are selling them what to raise the price for." <laughs> I said, "What am I going to tell?" <clears throat> oh, incidentally, <clears throat> Lori called me, the lady from the store. Some man in California called her up. Order the flag. Are you ready for this? Yeah. And he said to her, tell him I want to donate $500 to his favorite charity. Wow. So I said to Lori, look, Lori, I said, you know the outfit that you took me to that dinner that night that helps veterans out? She said, yes. I said, give the money to them. I said, I, I, said, I have charities of my own that I give to religiously every month, and I'm not going to pick one of those out. I give it to some veterans organization. That's the least I can do. So that's yeah. the end of that. You know, so, so, so Laurie, who's who runs a like a gift shop, where she sells some of your some of your uh, flags, and you run them over in the car. You still drive ninety four. You live. Oh on yeah, the right. Yeah. As a matter I gotta fact, say, she you, just told me she's she's already sold ten of them. I, mean, I got to say, you are the picture of health. I mean, you're a sturdy guy. I mean, you you look. I mean, you live a life of a much younger man. I mean, to my eye. And, yeah. Well, and, um, that's and, all my mother's genes that I uh, got. You know, she lived to be ninety six. So you Somebody say told Jerry, them once they should take. What's so you that? say you're Irish? Jerry my, Goldman, my mother? You're Irish, huh? No, you, my mother's mother and father were born in Ireland. My my grandfather's name was Malachy Milady, 
And uh, my grandmother, before she married him, her name was Josephine Lennon. They both came from Island Ross Common. That's why we went to Island, because they wanted to go back to see the town that they came from, you know. And everybody in his brother was named Milady over there. So, But they all spelled it a different way, with uh, with an A, with an E, you know. And so, uh, anyway, so uh, that's it, hmm. you know. So you, I uh, often wish sometimes that I had gone into more background of my family, you know. Like I, I was thinking the other day, I wonder how my mother met my father. I never found out, you know. I just know one time that when they live in an apartment in New York with my baby sister and her father came down, he ran a farm up on the Hudson River. Don't forget, this is Malachi Milady. And he said, where's your husband? And my mother said, oh, he's down there wheeling the carriage. And he looked out the window and he turns to her and says, he's not much of a man. <laughs> in other words, because my father was wheeling the baby carriage, yeah. that showed that he was... The, Right. Not masculine enough. Right. My father was probably one of the most talented people I ever met in my life. In what way? He played piano and violin for Vincent Lopez, and he was a terrific athlete. I used to catch the ball with him, and I'd throw a high fly, and he'd run after it, and then just you thought he was going to catch it, he'd bend over and he'd catch it behind his back. Really? <laughs> huh. He was terrific. You know? So you grew up in uh, Richmond Hill, Queens? Richmond Hill, yeah. Wow. Oh, I went to Richmond Hill High School, huh? I only went there for one year. I went for one year to St. John's Prep, and uh, then my father uh, lost his trucking business. He had a f fight with the unions and all that stuff. And, uh, and then I went to Richmond Hill, and then they, so we had a summer home out in East Rockaway, and I went out to East Rockaway, and I was there as a junior and a senior. And I, I was captain of the track team, and I played football, but I was not a good football player because I never followed my blockers. <laughs> huh. Yeah. So, and then you said that when you first went into the service, uh, and earlier in, when the war was um, just beginning, you went into the Navy to try to be a pilot, and that didn't work out, and uh, you had a deal that you could back out of the Navy? Is that Yes, if, yes. It was, uh, if you signed up as a Naval Aviation Cadet, the contract was that if you didn't get your wings as a Navy pilot, you could either stay in the Navy or go home. And I didn't want to stay in the Navy. I didn't want to know. As a matter of fact, my intention was if I got my wings, I was going to be a Marine pilot. That was my ideal, you know. And so, but that was probably the biggest disappointment of my life that yeah. I didn't get my wings, you know. So and then you became anyway. Then you became a Marine, life. huh? <clears throat> yes, I went home and I waited for the draft board to call me. And at the time, they didn't, you know, if they decided where they'd tell you where you're going. But because I had been in the service. They asked me where would I'd like to go, and I said, I'd like to go in the Marines. <coughs> I'll tell you a quick story. When I was in, the, in boot camp in the Marine Corps, don't forget, I, my, my DI knew that I had been in the service, and I was a squad leader, <clears throat> which means there were like 15 men behind me, and every morning they checked the guys to see that they were clean, you know, and they checked their ears, and if they were dirty, they'd tell you, the squad leader, you know. And it would start it out, he'd say to me, Goldman, I'm surprised that a man like you that was in the, uh, the Navy Air Corps is letting this happen. And then the next time he'd say, I'm surprised that a man like you that went to the Naval Academy, <laughs> each time he'd try to make promotion. it work. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, was that, Jared, was that Paris Island? Yeah, that's, that's Paris Island, absolutely, yep. And is yep. it as bad as everyone says when they come out of there? Uh, I mean, it didn't bother me any. It didn't bother me any. <laughs> I'll tell you another story. They had a they had a deal there where we, they had uh, uh, boxing against the air crew against the ground, ground crew. So uh, I used to be able to punch the bag with my elbows and everything else. So anyway, I decided I'll take a shot at it, you know. I had no experience boxing, but I thought, what the hell, I'll try it. So I, I'm waiting in this gym, uh, in this Quonset hut to go on, and there's thousands of Marines out there, you know. And the guy that I'm going to fight is sitting over in the corner, and I'm up there punching the bag, you know. I'm using psychology on I mean, and his eyes are popping out of his head because the bag is flying back and forth. Anyway, we get out in the ring, and he comes out like a tiger, and he's punching the hell out of me. And finally, at the, at the end of three rounds, uh, I was down for the count, and I knew enough about boxing, you know, and not, get, not, not getting up till the count of nine. And I hear the crowd booing. And after the fight, he never, didn't knock me out, but anyway, after the fight, I said to the guys that I know, I said, what the hell are you booing me for? They said, he was hitting you when you were down on your knees. <laughs> wow. Oh, God. So You must have been a big, I mean, you're a big guy now at 94. You must have been, how, 
I mean, what, were you a big guy at that time? I mean, when you no, were I was actually when I was uh, when I told you that I ran for the Navy that we had a track team. I was the 100 yard uh, champion of the base. I was 165 pounds. Really? Um, the most I weighed in high school was 170. Huh. But now I'm 210. You know, it's all blob, you know. No, you're in <clears> shape. <throat> yeah. All right. Well, listen, I'm glad we'll get to speak to you on Flag Day itself, you know. I mean, there's, and there's no better example on Flag Day than your block on, in Bayshore on Abrew Street and yeah, all the 30 flags yeah. that are made by your hand on everyone's, um, on everyone's uh, homes, trees, whatever, you know. You can't miss it when right, you ride down yeah. the block. So that's it's a great testament to I, your I've patriotism. I've gotten a couple of calls, Corey. One was from a lady in Kentucky. <clears throat> And she wanted to talk to me, and uh, I told her, I said, oh, that's so nice of you. And I said, you know what? I said, you're the first person that ever bought a flag from the state of Kentucky. So I said, that's another state, uh, you know. How many and also, I got, got a call from a woman in Philadelphia, and I don't, have, I don't have anything in Pennsylvania. And she told, uh, she said she's going to tell her friends to call Lori, you know, to order a flag, you know. I'm not getting involved in it. I, I don't have the patience or the... You know, to yeah. get involved in that stuff. I don't yeah, want to you're the talent that. part of the equation. You just make these Not things, the you know. That's you don't cool. mess That's with the artists. You, know? you let the other people have fact, the business. As a matter of fact, Corey, she already sold 10 of them. She told me. Yeah. And she yeah. said, you're going to have to, you know, make a lot more. I said, well, I'll do what I can. And I said, if people have to wait four or five days, they're going to have to wait. That's all. Yeah, you know? let them wait, man. I mean, these, <laughs> right, these are real, yeah. these are, yeah. these are pieces of art. This is not a art. sweatshop you're running. Yeah, this Come is on. pieces of right, art. Yeah. Right. And Jerry, you know one thing? If you're going to be now, I mean, you're an artist now. Let's face it. I mean, now I think we've crossed I'm the threshold. I'm not an artist, and, yeah. Uh, that's what, Pierre, that's what my son Arthur's wife says. He's a folk artist, a folk artist. What, you know. Folk art, yeah. The price just went yeah. up tenfold. <laughs> So uh, yeah. the thing is, the problem is you got to get temperamental and moody. You're too nice of a guy, Jerry. You got to get like you know, you got to be all, you know, like an artist, you know, pacing around, and you got to get the press. You and, really you don't know, know me, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> My son did tell you he's a miserable son of a so and so. Ah, come on, you're a great guy. Yeah. When I looked, when I was in his house yesterday, I looked down at the footstool. Well, two days ago, I looked down at the footstool of his. You know, he's got his easy chair. He's got his his glasses, his, his channel clicker. You know, the phone. And then next to it is is the crossword puzzle from that day's paper, done in pen. Like he just scribbled Ooh. the thing off. Here's this guy's telling me he's at the he's at the bottom of his class. He's got the crossword puzzle done in pen from like that morning. I know he's 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 sharp. He's sharper than he lets on this guy. Well, so. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Well, thanks for coming on and keep making those keep making those flags. Okay, and I want to thank you again for printing that article. It's very nice of you. You got it. Yeah. It was nice Take care work. now. Yep. Keep Semper in touch, fi. Corey. Semper fi. What's that? Semper fi. Semper fi. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Corey, you you got to this story just an unsolicited unsolicited email came to you. Or? No, his grandson sent me the email. Right, right. But how did he know to? No, send he's you? seen my articles. You know, so he thought it would be right for the stuff that I do. And um, and do you get a lot of that? Like uh, you know, unsolicited. And you say, oh, this looks interesting. Yeah, Matt but you doesn't... know, it's of mixed. You know, most of them probably wouldn't work. You know, right. some of a lot of them for PR people and and those and they're, you know they're promoting someone who's got a great resume or is a CEO or something like that. But it really is not up my alley. You know, right. And I do characters. I do people with you know, the human interest type of stuff, you know, and some guy like Jerry, you know, and yeah. he's not going to have a PR guy, although now, now, maybe, <laughs> he might now, actually, you know, he, the gears are all working, but yeah, so you have to kind of like, and you can only tell so much from an email pitch, you have to, you kind of, you want to call the people, because maybe there is, even if you think you're skeptical, you think there it might be a story, so, so when I got the email about him, for example, you know, a couple paragraphs describing what he did, who knows, I mean, t and I was like, eh, who knows how this could be, and I called the grandson, and then I called Jerry, and I turned out what you've made. He's made almost five hundred of these things, you know, on his ki kitchen table, and that, that's it's just pretty cool, you know. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah. That's, it's not gonna. It's not earth shattering news, but it's. Uh, so I saved it for like. I go. How could I make? You know, I still have to interest the editors in this. You know, right? You got to pitch so, the idea to them. Right. Some guy right. on Long Island making flags. You know, you have. And I said, listen, on, I got this a few months ago, and Memorial Day was coming up. And then I think Jer whatever happened, Jerry got a little under the weather or something. It couldn't work out. So then I heard the flag day was coming up. And now you'd never like Arbor Day. I mean, who who would, who knows? Yeah, who yeah. even knows when it is? It, today is flag day. How many people would know that, you know? But I thought, okay, even though it's an unsung holiday, it's, it's perfect for the timing for this. Because a guy like him would know it because he's, you know, the American yeah. flag's his thing, you know? Uh -huh. so, yeah. so there you have it. Now, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, I mean... I know through the Twitter account, uh, what? Yeah, or Corey at NY Times is my email, C O R E Y at NY Times. And on Corey Kilgannon, my, just my full name uh, on Twitter. Or if they and want to, they can find you. 
Yeah, I got these you this days, morning, anyone can find you. you know? <laughs> They're watching us right now. <laughs> and you listen to WBAI and all.